Welcome to the Women's Sanctuary, the podcast about tending the soul of women, sisterhood, and the rise of the sacred feminine. I'm your host, Arlia Hoffman. All righty. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're back with a new guest here on the Women's Sanctuary, and her name is Jennifer Page. Um, Jennifer and I met on the She Podcasts Facebook group, which yeah. is a fantastic group. And uh, here's her bio. Jennifer grew up with the fairies dancing in her head and the notion that subtle magic is all around us. Everything is alive, growing, and connected. She loves celebrating what it means to be a part of this world and sharing the connections we all have together. She is co-creator and co-host of the paranormal podcast Odd Tonic, as well as the owner of the Forest Parlor, which offers divination readings and nature energy healing work. Jennifer is a master level Reiki healer and green witch. She lives in the woods of the Pacific Northwest with her spooky partner, Maxwell, and their black cat amulet. (laughs) <laughs> welcome jennifer oh thank you so much for having me i think that kind of sums yeah, it up we're done <laughs> yeah okay all right Moving yeah, on. <laughs> um yeah tell me about all these well i have a, a lot of questions um <laughs> let's start with the fact that you are a fellow podcaster and and what do you do with on odd tonic true that like you said that's how we met on the she podcast group because i am a podcaster myself Odd Tonic is about an, a year old. Uh, we cover, me and Maxwell cover weird history, strange science, and the paranormal. We are on hiatus right now just because of uh, the pandemic it, that has brought a lot of personal responsibilities to the table. Mm-hmm. So it's just eating into our, our fun time of being able to record. But you know, like we're still developing episodes behind the scenes. Um, mm-hmm. To keep, we're going to keep it going. And we also have an online community on Facebook that we interact with every day. So, um, that is kind of the spook, cause we all have different sides to our personality, right? That's my spooky, gothic, romantic side of things. And, uh, with the forced parlor, it's more of the, um, lighter spiritual side of things. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't like to pick. I like to be, everything and go where my mood takes me. So it's really nice to have both outlets. I mean, they do bleed into each other. I purposefully Mm -hmm. named it the forced parlor because with a tonic, we record in our parlor. So I made a different parlor. So um, they are kind of sister, sister um, projects, but different and unique of each other with tone Mm -hmm. and vibe. And uh, I just really love exploring both. Yeah, I love that too. That's <laughs> that's great, especially um, this time of year, right? We're we're mm-hmm. sliding into fall, and things get a little spookier with Halloween and everything, and it's it's yeah. just fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I would imagine Halloween's your favorite holiday. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> favorite time of year. I love uh-huh. it. Too. Um. So tell me about the forest parlor. Oh, uh, long story or short story. <laughs> origin story. Um, well, uh, as I mentioned in my bio, uh, I, I don't like labels, but if, if, uh, if needing to pick one, I do label myself as a green witch. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been drawn and interested in natural magic and working with nature and the world we belong to. And I just naturally gravitated towards that, um, for as long as I can remember. And um, as, you know, just carried that with me into my adult life. And uh, there's a a large healing aspect to things with the forest parlor. And that isn't something that I personally ever really predicted. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did encounter some experiences with healing in my past. Uh, Just for example, my, my partner Maxwell had when we met, he had, um, quite, uh, a lot of back trouble, not all the time. It wasn't persistent, but when his back went out, Ooh, he couldn't move, you know, Mm -hmm. it's call in sick Mm -hmm. to work and you're not better until you see a chiropractor for a couple Mm -hmm. of days type of thing. And 
we just gradually notice that he doesn't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um, I, I'm not trained, uh, trained as a masseuse, but I would definitely, when I, when I would give him like a, a back rub or something, um, I just would naturally instinctively, uh, through compassion, just really focus, mm -hmm. uh, that energy and that caring. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of, I think it sort of crept into both our consciousness that it was an actual thing. And then I would do it intentionally. And once that started, um, that's really, I, I can't remember the last time he had this issue. It's, mm -hmm. it's really kind of disappeared. And, uh, and that wasn't the first instance. It was just, uh, there were other instances in my past, um, with other people that, uh, even more dramatic things would happen. But since I kind of don't have their permission, I, I right. feel weird about telling their stories. <laughs> so it was always just in the back of my head to begin with. And then, um, a while ago, I was in a car accident where, uh, someone re rear ended me and then, the car behind him rear-ended him and he hit mm -hmm. me again. And I was dealing with uh, issues with whiplash and, and back pain. And uh, it was at that point that I was just in so much pain and back pain is terrible, right? You can't yeah. get away from it. Yeah. Uh, there's just no relief from it. It was at that point where I was like, I'm, I need to try something. I need to do something. And, you know, this is with uh, icing and ibuprofen and seeing my chiropractor and everything already. So it wasn't like I'm just doing nothing. Um, I really decided to explore uh, self energy healing and I watched a couple of videos <laughs> and uh, took a crash course on YouTube and uh, just put my hands on the, on the back of my neck and really just sat with it. Uh, for a good half hour. And uh, the next day I woke up with absolutely no neck pain and I was floored. I was mm -hmm. absolutely floored. And um, it's it sounds crazy even just talking about and listening to myself. But, um, and it was then that I really, I started doing uh, energy healing meditations and I uh, started doing more meditations on chakra work and just really dove into it. And um, my back did get better. That is not an issue anymore. It just, the whole incident really bumped me down this path that I don't know if I would have gone down without mm -hmm. that happening. And mm -hmm. On a side note, it's really interesting when something terrible can happen, but the result of it can completely change your life depending on what you do with it. And there's a beauty to that, you know? Yes. And uh, so I'm very appreciative of that. And so from there, from that experience, um, I uh, got my certification in Reiki level one, uh, level two, and with level two, uh, that's when you start doing distance energy healing. Mm -hmm. And with uh, quarantine and the pandemic going on, um, I just found that incredibly useful. Um, when learning Reiki, they tell you to practice on friends and loved ones. And mm -hmm. that is a great way to even approach people with it. Like, hey, I'm, I'm taking this energy course and I'm supposed to practice on people. And that's just not imposing to anyone who ever feels like they're in that situation where, gosh, how do I break this to people? You know, how do yeah. I, how do I, uh, expose this in, in mm -hmm. people's lives and approach them. And I did find it very, uh, useful. And, uh, even in the odd tonic, uh, Facebook group, because it's a paranormal group, I was like, Hey, I am supposed to be practicing, uh, distance healing. Anyone want a session, you know? And, uh, just, I'm always astounded by the results. And um, it just, every session is another encouragement. And uh, it encouraged me to go on to level three, which uh, is interesting in itself. And I'm, I am almost done with uh, crystal Reiki certification. I still mm -hmm. need an attunement for that. 
Um, but like just exploring all those avenues because of this terrible thing that happened to me, um, is just, gosh, it's just <laughs> kind of wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, it opened a whole new world for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I love the energy you bring to it because there's a there's a humility in the surprise of oh, it. Completely. In the surprise of, oh, this is something, this is a gift, you know, that has is just kind of natural in me. I haven't asked for it. I haven't forced it. And suddenly mm -hmm. here it is. And to me, that's almost the, the purest kind where you're just, okay, I'm open. I'm going to uh -huh. use it that it's yeah. beautiful that you were open to it. Thank you. I do think that it is an innate ability that we have and whether or not someone chooses to put attention to it or take it seriously or, or build up the, the focus that, that is needed um, is completely up to a person. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, time and time again, um, I have been, you know, you take a step back and you're like, wow, did that really happen? <laughs> um, it's, it's, it really is amazing. And it is humbling in itself because uh, I, I'm also an artist and, and the, this is the only thing I can really compare it to whenever I, I draw. Yes, I have an idea or, or a concept and then I kind of go into the zone and suddenly you take a step back and you're like, wow. Who made that? <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. It, it's kind of like something. It's it's bigger than you, and mm -hmm. uh, yes, you are a part of it, and you're participating, and you're a witness. But it, it's I I can't feel like I take credit for it. You know, it's just something that I can offer, and and I'm always grateful for the person who is willing to take that journey with me. And uh, have that experience and be open to it, and then we're we're both in the same spot where we're like, "Can you believe this? No, I can't. We can't." <laughs> it is magical. Elizabeth Gilbert calls that big magic. Ooh, Just that, that field of creativity where you're open, and you know you can't take full credit for it, but you can take credit for being open and allowing it to fl flow through. Definitely, you definitely have to get out of your own way. You have to. You have to uh, set aside the, what if I look silly? What if it doesn't work? What if, what if um, I make myself look bad? What if I can't do it? All the what ifs, the terrible what ifs that we all overthink in our heads. You definitely have to uh, remove that aspect and really make it not about you, you know, mm. and, and that can be really hard. Um, we're just not culturally in a society kind of way uh taught to um have that mindset a lot oh yeah it's all about controlling life with the mind oh yeah, yeah. right force of will i will make this happen yeah. how that's working <laughs> right it's kind of how we got where we are <laughs> um so I'm curious, actually, you mentioned um, crystal Reiki, and I didn't realize there was an actual, you know, attunement available yeah. for that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it was a shorter course, and uh, it's something that I've had to explore online just because of quarantine, and now is a perfect time for online learning, right? Um, but it is uh, a recorded course, and but the attunement is is through the actual teacher of the class. It's not like you push a button that says attunement and, and you're done. Mm -hmm. But uh, the crystal Reiki aspect of it is just really great. It explores sacred geometry and crystal grid work. And um, for anyone not familiar with that, it's you use sacred geometry. Um, there are certain, I, I think there's seven main patterns that you can use. And the uh, fractal is... Is an example I think that everyone knows about mm -hmm. if we're talking about sacred geometry. But you uh, pick your intent. Like say you want to heal someone. Maybe they are um, they're dealing it with an anxious time, and you want to do something calming. So you would pick your calming. The crystals associated with calming aspects of life and healing, and you pick those crystals, and then you align them all on the sacred geometry grid. 
uh, so that they can amplify and complement each other. And then from there, you channel your own energy, whether it's Reiki energy or your own, you know, vibration to charge these crystals. And you kind of work with the vibrations of those crystals with your own. So it kind of just amplifies and channels and gives you a focal point to focus on something. I know there's a lot of people out there who kind of scoff at crystals, but the way, you know, I don't think a crystal alone necessarily will change your life. But I do believe that every physical construct in nature is composed of energy and that energy is going to have a frequency that resonates with other frequencies. And when you line those things up and work with those things together, that's when the magic happens. It's not a rock sitting there by itself that's going to necessarily change the world, but it's a focal point for you and a way to connect with something in the natural world to amplify your work. Right. Yeah. They, they have their own vibration and yeah. energetic signature. Yeah. yeah. And like with picking, selecting your crystals, you usually want to do it in person because not every piece of quartz is going to be the same. And, um, you know, you really work with that intuitive energy of what, what you're drawn to. And that's another thing you need to learn to trust in the things that you can't necessarily see, but for some reason they're speaking to you and you feel it. And uh, it's a quiet kind of energy and this world can be really loud and it's very easy to um, just not see the validity of that because uh, the bass music's too loud or something. <laughs> and uh <laughs> Yeah, it's really interesting. I love the challenge of being quiet and working on that uh, those subtle levels of uh, energy that the world just doesn't seem to have time for a lot. Yeah, I've I've found since since COVID hit that um, for me it's been easier to cultivate mm -hmm. that going within and that con contemplation and the connection with the intuition because there's been more time mm -hmm. more and even if there's not more time it's more it, i mean the world felt at least for a long time felt quieter mm -hmm. oh calm. yeah um, yeah and easier to kind of feel the what's going on on the inside mm -hmm. which i'm sure can be very uncomfortable for some people yeah a yeah people. a lot of people like that external stimulus and they i don't know if if they're avoiding it the inside or not but there is a lot of things that, like my car accident, where you can say, wow, this is such a terrible thing, but there's so many wonderful things that can come from it as well. Mm -hmm. And I really am hopeful that this situ situation in this unique year we're having can really make us more introspective and um, just change the things that weren't working to begin with and that aren't working now. So we can, you know, utilize this time for something wonderful instead of focusing on how terrible and sad it is, you know? Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a moment. How sure. do you, how do you see things evolving for humanity? Maybe not just the U.S., but for humanity spiritually and collectively and physically through this? Well, I mean, this year, woo, <laughs> the things we're seeing, but, you know, I think we, especially in the U.S., we're seeing a lot of, we have seen over the past couple of years, a lot of extremes and we're trying to get to a, a more balanced place. But in order to do that, if the pendulum has swung really far one way, it needs to swing really far the other way in order to settle somewhere in a balance, right? And I think okay. that because we have gone so far down one path that we have to yank it back. It, there's just a lot of, I see a lot of growing pains and I see that change being very painful. And it's terrible that that is a situation for so many people. But I think that if we can keep the goal in mind and find that lovely balance of, like I had said about fixing the things that weren't working 
and um, really keeping the eye on where we want to go instead of where we are. Because mm-hmm. it's very easy to just focus on the negative and that's not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to change the situation. It's going to keep you miserable. So if we can really, you know, I am, it's pretty, it's a pretty tall order to tell people or ask people to find the beauty in a situation like this. But if we can at least realize that there are paths to a more positive goal, um, you know, you have to work towards that in order to find yourself there one day, because otherwise you're just a victim of circumstance and, and you're reactionary instead of um, being, you know, proactive about things. So I have hope, you know, I, I, I think on the individual level, it's, it's up to, it's up to a person to decide what to do with their time, but that's always the case. Mm -hmm. It is always the case. Yeah. yeah, I am hopeful that those who can find um, can find hope and can find the positives for themselves and collectively. Yeah, not everybody can do that, but those who can can hopefully turn the tide of our collective uh, destiny. Yeah, and I think that if someone truly has the mindset that no, I I need to be positive, I need to think differently, I need to shift. That's when you go seeking it out and you'll find other people who feel the same way. And then you're getting different input than what you were the day before. And um, social media is a very powerful tool. I think that it's run a little crazy mm-hmm. uh, with the negativity and the the false information and the, the just the fighting and, and the how people treat each other uh, on the screen instead of face to face. Um, it's become such a culture in itself. People don't even realize they're doing it to each other and how they talk to each other. And, but social media is also a place where you can find like-minded groups and find the people who, um, have common interests with you and, and you can shift, change the channel, (laughs) change the channel of what you're listening to and what your input is, or, you know, even take the time to shut it off and, just mm-hmm. listen to yourself, you know, for a while and, and then slowly integrate back in because sometimes you don't know um, how inundated you are until it's quiet again, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I've been focusing on that um, here on the Women's Sanctuary about just helping people navigate um, the the chaos, but also that that polarity and that fighting to kind of be able to get back to, you know, whatever your own center is Mm -hmm. and not be focused on the, the divisiveness, but to hopefully at least find your own center and, and be a force for, for, um, transcending that, that polarity, you know, through, through, um, through honoring all, all viewpoints Mm -hmm. and, and respecting viewpoints and, you know, trying to find some common ground in a way that is respectful for everyone. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, the media certainly has its opinions, right? And it's slant on things. And uh, you know, I'm up in Seattle and the news was just reporting um, the, the protests in such a light that people were messaging me and saying, oh my gosh, are you okay? Yeah. And I'd be like, "What are you talking about? Everything's fine." You know, yeah, and like, I've been a little worried. I have family up in Seattle, mm-hmm. so I've, I've had the same thought that it sounds pretty, pretty bad in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, uh, and people are still. That's that's the the uh, the overall message and impression that people are getting. But you know that that is the large macro filter of everything. And that we all kind of fall into that trap. Like, you know, any kind of example of everyone believes this. And, but if you turn to the person next to you and say, hey, do you believe this? Or, hey, do you, you know, ask individuals, people on an individual level, Mm -hmm. nothing is ever so clear cut and and dramatic normally. I mean, sure, we have extreme personalities um, that we encounter, but in day to day life, you know, 
with the Seattle thing, with the pandemic, you know, I, I check in with myself. I'm like, okay, of all the franticness and all the worry and all the, the terrible that I'm feeling myself or sensing in other people, you know, just take a step back and say, okay, what is actually happening right now? I'm sitting in a chair. <laughs> you know? yes, I do that too. Like what is real right now? Mm-hmm. Well, here I am. I'm, I'm breathing. I'm having a lovely conversation. I'm enjoying myself. You know, like that's this moment. Exactly. And when we, when we're too busy occupying ourselves with something else, we're robbing ourselves of the only actual moment we have, which is right now. (laughs) So yeah, there, there's, it's a very challenging time when it comes to distractions and issues and, and ultimately, we do have to bring it down to an individual level of what can I do? What am I doing? How can I affect this as a person? How can I change myself? How can I be there for myself? How can I support the people I love um, and not get caught up in something that feels so overwhelming that you feel paralyzed that you can't even do anything about it? Mm-hmm. And that's that's just not a good place to be. It's not a good place to live for anyone. And um, yeah, I love to encourage people to just bring it back down to uh, you and the, the people you care about and um, work from there. Don't start at the top. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with things outside your control. Yeah. So how, how do you get how do you get centered? How do you take care of yourself? <sighs> Fortunately, I have. A very lovely backyard. <laughs> important. Uh, you know, I, when I wake up in the morning, I try really hard not to grab my phone first. Because, oh, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Email, social media, news. When you do that first thing, the day's not yours anymore. It's someone mm-hmm. else's. Uh, so if you can start off quiet with, you know, make a cup of tea, infuse it with an intention you know, for the day and slowly drink that while you're looking at your view or, or listening to music that you love or, you know, appreciating the cozy blanket that you have, you know, uh, that sort of thing. And just kind of plan your day that way. Like, what's your intention for the day? What are you going to give this day? What is this? What are you going to demand of the day? What are you going to give back? And, um, really, um, I love, I love lighting candles. I mm-hmm. love incense or burning herbs. Um, as, as a green witch, I love uh, calling the corners. And, you know, every element has different aspects to it. You know, the grounding earth of nature uh, with earth. Um, in, invention and wisdom and air and, you know, fire and creativity with the in the south and uh you know dreaming intuition with water in the west you know so many different aspects that you can weave into uh, into your day like what what you're invoking in yourself and and how you are a part of nature and how you can just incorporate that into your life um mm-hmm. is something you know it it can be challenging. Everyone has their grumpy day, <laughs> but overall, if you if you start off really grounding yourself, centering yourself, where am I in this universe, and what do I want to do with the time I have today? Um, you know, outside of laundry and <laughs> doing the dishes, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you can even do those things with intention. Absolutely. I love those questions. I actually have had to, and I've had to, but I, I um, posted a list of mindful questions on my refrigerator, mm. you know, about making your bed and doing the laundry and doing the dishes uh-huh. just so that I could remind myself that it's, um, it, it is a chore and it's, it is the stuff of life. Yeah. And it, it can be infused with sacredness and mindfulness. Oh, definitely. Well. Making, making the bed is a big one with me because the, the bedroom is, not tidy <laughs> if the if the bed is like you know exploding yeah. and but like the simple act of 
straightening it up and, you know, I pick these pillows. I pick these sheets. I love where I sleep. You know, um, I'm going to honor that space. And, and, you know, it's not that I am a clean freak by any means, but I kind of just understand that clutter creates a certain energy in it and it Mm -hmm. promotes a stagnation that like I can't work or be creative in a messy space. I have to clear clear it out first just so I can have that space to focus on the thing I want to do. And that's kind of how it is. It's just when the when the clutter adds up and the stagnation and you know in the corners and everything, you just you got to clear it out. And uh metaphorically and physically. Yeah. And uh really that's what it's all about. It's not about oh my gosh, the bed needs to get made. I think it's more about honoring the fact that I love sleeping in my bed and I want my space to have some harmony to it. Cause I am not a clean freak, but I like, I like some good energy. <laughs> I am right there with you. I'm right there with you. Well, tell me about um, some of the other things you, you will both practice and offer in the forest parlor. Cause I, I just get the sense that you are multi-talented, <laughs> but, but offer you, you, that all your gifts come together in the forest parlor. It's really interesting. I've been reading tarot cards and doing divination for years. <laughs> um, my big joke is I'm really known for drunk palm reading. <laughs> it's like once I've had a, a, a glass of wine, I will come is up to street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the past, you know, back when I could socialize with people, it, it was just a known thing. Jennifer's had wine. She's going to be reading everyone's palms, like people I don't even know, especially because I don't want to read the palms of people I know because then they think I'm just giving them personal advice. But if I come up to a stranger, I go, here's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I would have to try that. <laughs> oh, it's fun. It's fun. Um, but I've been reading tarot cards, oh, since they crossed my path when I was 13. And I've... I've always really enjoyed uh, them as a media for divination. And I've offered online readings for people on Etsy for years, but just Mm -hmm. as a, like, I will email you your reading. And then with Autonic in the Autonic community group, I started doing Tarot Tuesdays where I would post a spread of three cards and people have, uh, you know, with on with just the backs uh, showing, so they didn't know what the card was. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, pick a card, and this will be your your fortune for the week. And then from there, and I just used to post a write up with the picture of the cards, and then I started doing live videos of Tarot Tuesday with the card reveal at the end of the day for the three cards, and you know. I do full spreads um, professionally. It, like I've been hired to do that for like Halloween parties or birthdays, mm-hmm. things like that. And with Tarot Tuesday, with that doing the live readings, it just really got me comfortable because I grew up very, very shy. It got me very comfortable with the idea of offering um, like Skype readings. Mm. And when the forest parlor work came about, I just really realized how, and it says as much on my website, how sometimes people just need a reset. And what a great thing to do to have a full tarot spread divination done. You know, we, we, I love to have deep emotional conversations about these cards and because they just reveal so much and. Uh, for the questioner and we'll have this really in-depth conversation about you know goals or what's been missing and it's usually you know something that someone already knew but they they just need to hear this validation you know Mm -hmm. and then to be able to walk away from the tarot tarot reading and sit with that for a while um as the person participating and really kind of gel on the ideas of, oh, what what am I walking away with this from? What do I want to do? How do I want to transform? And to take that and then later do an energy session where 
it's really focused on that and you can work with that energy and just, I've seen people just springboard off of that and, Mm -hmm. and have this, have this ability to go in this new direction and reinvent themselves and just really bloom. And, Mm -hmm. uh, it's just such a beautiful thing to see. And it's just so great. You know, like I said, I grew up incredibly shy and to be able to offer people that experience and just to help them, um, get there. And it's just, you know, I have to, I have to remove my shyness from the equation. I have to remove my, all my doubts and fears on how this isn't going to work because, because it does work. Um, it's so much more than, than me and my issues. <laughs> It's so much more than that. And to be able to be there for someone, like if I, like just with, like with this conversation, if I let that myself get in the way, we wouldn't even be talking right now. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people can relate to that, that um, we shouldn't make fear-based decisions. We should, we should go with what makes our heart sing to begin with and not listen to the overthinking and the, all the why we shouldn't, um, yeah, well, I, I'd like to explore that a little more because I was always drawn to um, healing arts. I, I, I have a background in, in shamanic medicine. Mm. And when I went to, but I was, and then I also have a background in music. And I, when I went to college, I was a, a piano major. Well, I couldn't perform to save my life because I was so shy and I was so afraid. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it wasn't until my early forties, maybe, yeah, it's been maybe 10 years ago now that um, when I, I did training in women's sacred circles in the middle of, of um, ceremony one day, something clicked and I suddenly just had this inner clarity about, you know, this is who I am. This is what I do. And it's not about me. There yeah. is this, there's this thing coming through me that, um, and it's it made it so easy to step out of the way mm-hmm. and let it work. Mm-hmm. So was there a moment for you where you were able to come out of the shyness and um I don't, was it a gradual? I I think it was more of a gradual thing for me because I I definitely have have even had this conversation with people that wow, well, we wouldn't be doing this if if a b c And, you know, they can be very well in that situation themselves. It's like, well, if you don't do this, what are you robbing the world of? You know, Mm -hmm. and um, I think that I I don't know when that exact moment was of realizing that, you know, if we're here, um, being able to create and manifest something that wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And you had a thought, you had an idea, you do it, and suddenly it's reality. That's something that is so easily dismissed. But when you, the more you think about it, the weirder it gets, (laughs) and the more wondrous it gets. And when you think of that concept of, you know, you are here, you can manifest anything, you can make it a reality. You're shaping, you're shaping your world and others. Um, You might change someone's life. It, with a simple sentence because they needed to hear it, you know, um, all those things are so much bigger than, than anything that you could possibly, um, dispute. Mm, absolutely. Um, I think I mentioned to you off of this call about perfect love and perfect trust and how. If- yes. I wrote that down on my notes because it was, <laughs> um, <laughs> Perfect love and perfect trust is the idea that you're trusting the universe. You're, Mm -hmm. you're trusting the universe and you are, you know, that's the perfect trust part of it. And that the perfect love is that when you come at it with all the love and compassion in your heart and, you know, yeah, you and I had talked about this, about how, um, you know, being shy and other things, um, uh, it can be hard to be spiritual in right now in our culture. Um, mm-hmm. 
you kind of open yourself up for, oh my gosh, that's nonsense. Oh my gosh, that's that's so childish of you to think that the world the world doesn't have magic. There's just so much materialism in this world right now. If you can't pick it up and hold it, it's not real and you need to prove it to someone. Um, but And when I think about that criticism, that's when perfect love and perfect trust really comes in for me because I do trust that this feels right. You know, I know it's right. And the perfect love is I'm coming from a place of absolute compassion and, and love for, for the experience of being here and what it is to experience it with others and relate to that person and have an interaction. And whether it's a a person or tree or a crystal, you Mm -hmm. know, and when you come at it with perfect love and perfect trust, I feel like that criticism just falls away. And if someone wants to feel the way they feel, it's just not right for them right now. And maybe they'll come around and maybe they won't. It's just not their path. And that has absolutely nothing to do with me. And uh, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. And so really when we're afraid of criticism or what people will think or or how someone's going to try and tear it apart, it just, it's just a non-issue. Um, it just, you know, like I said, they can feel that way if they feel that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's their right. Maybe they'll come around, maybe they won't, but uh, it works for me. And, and um, we all have to find what works for us. Yeah, that's a beautiful perspective. And I, I, Thank I, you. I find that completely in alignment with, um, you know, what I was saying about where we kind of need to be right now is, is, um, is, is allowing everybody to be where they are Mm -hmm. and, and having that, just that inner knowing that inner standing of this is who I am and this is what's true for me. And this is how I'm living and it is what it is. So be it. Yeah. Right. So be it. And, um, that not only empowers others to be where they are, but empowers you to, to be, um, I keep doing this on camera. <laughs> see me. Um, I, I, um, it's my hand going right down the middle of my body. Cause I just feel that this standing as you are, mm-hmm. who you are claiming all of that mm-hmm. with that perfect trust in yourself. Yeah. And that compassion for yourself and others. Yeah. Uh, is a very powerful place to be. Yeah. And I think a very good place to be in the midst of incredible change. <sighs> Completely. And <laughs> the other side of that, you kind of touched on it a bit is a, holding space for someone else in, in where they are in their life right now. Um, I think there is a lot of need to, you know, face conflict and, teach someone and make them understand. It's like, no, give them space to be where they're at. And cause that's all you can ever expect of anyone. And, you know, I think we have a habit of trying to fix, fix, fix. And it's like, sometimes people just need a space to feel heard and, and not fixed, just heard and listened to. And maybe things lessen up a little bit. And sometimes, you know, there's a lot of anger out there and, the root issue isn't being addressed. And if we don't give someone space to explore what they're so angry about and they don't feel listened to uh, from the get go, um, there's, there's not going to be any kind of shift there. So if we can hold our own sacred space for ourselves and we can hold space for others who might not be where you're at, because you know, you're not where they're at either, you know? So (laughs) If we can hold space for each other, I think that's very important. Yes. Wow, you just summed up all my leadership work in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just holding space for others, allowing them to be where they are, knowing you can't fix them, mm-hmm. but you can listen and and you can give them your heart and yeah. And uh, you know, uh, that's the other thing you can give of yourself and still call your energy back to you so that you can give it out again. 
and give people their energy back to them. If someone is, is throwing energy at you and it's really upsetting you, you have every right to just, no, this is yours. You keep that now. I am going to put this down. You can pick it back up if you want, but I'm putting this down and I'm, I'm going on about my business. <laughs> Those are all great techniques. <laughs> Absolutely. Gosh, that's, you know, yeah. It, it's important. It's important. That that's the, really the the way you stay clear and clean within yourself. It's, is, it's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. Mm-hmm. But if we can keep reminding ourselves and, and keep practicing it and like you got to notice it first, right? And when you notice it, you can come back to it. Um, But if you don't, if you're not aware of it, how are you ever going to change it? But, and there's no shame in noticing that, oh, I handled that badly. You know, you evaluate and then you come back, you know, you, you recenter without judgment and you, you know, you resign to do better in the future. And hopefully the space in between the realizations and, you know, lessons and lessons and, and soon you're there, but it all takes work. We're not perfect. We'll never be perfect. Life is messy. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you, you have a, you, you carry a lot of wisdom. I'm wondering um, if you would like to share your tarot cards, do a tarot reading yeah. and see what kind of wisdom comes up from that. Right. It's not Tuesday, but um, I did do, <laughs> I have my own like mini version of what was it Friday? Let's do Fortune Friday. I don't know when your show comes out, but what's great about it will this, come out on Monday. So somebody may listen to it on Tuesday. Magical Monday, Tarot Tuesday, Witchy, Wen- Witchy Wednesday, <laughs> can go on and on, right? Um, <laughs> here's the beauty. I drew three cards. And for those listening, you can play at any time because the great thing about this sort of thing is maybe you're hearing it then for a reason. And even if that isn't clear, look for those synchronicities later, you know, um, so it's just, it doesn't matter when you do it, if you're participating live or not, it's about when this crosses your path, right? Uh, so that's, that's the fun aspect of it to me. But um, I have three cards and and I will let you pick yours. But this is card number one. Okay, so everyone is going to audibly hear card number one here. So maybe okay. number one is your card. Card number two. Maybe number two is your card. And card number three. And I also encourage people to do any combination of these cards that they would like. Maybe one and two are speaking to you. Maybe it's one and three or two and three. You just never know. What do you think? I think number three. Awesome. Okay. Well, should I go in through order or should I do number three first? Use your intuition. Okay. What does your intuition tell you? Just because there's so many people because your podcast is going to be an amazing success. So many people are listening to this. Let's just go in order. So if someone picked card number one, that card is the magician. So if you pick the magician, it may very well mean uh, that life is telling you that you have so much skill, so much experience to draw from, so um, so many things that you've experienced and done. But you might be holding yourself back because you're a critical thinker. And really what you need to realize is that the only thing you need is some willpower. And if you dedicate yourself, things will magically happen. And uh, you just got to do it. And so stop holding yourself back. Realize that that the roadblock is you. And that uh, really you're going to make magic happen. So realize, you know, take a list of all your skills and experiences and how you are qualified and not that you have to prove anything to yourself. These things are real. So just do it, just um, do it, it, whatever it is that you're on the fence about doing and make it happen. Just make some magic and make things work. Card number two is the sun. Now, if you picked card number two today, the sun is very much a victory card. Maybe things have been tough. Maybe you've been facing some challenges and maybe you're at the point where you're feeling like there is some relief or you're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, or maybe it feels like, you know, you've made some progress, but you're not quite trusting it yet. 
realize that the sun card is telling you that you can trust that you're on the right path, that things are bettering and that keep working, keep working. You may not be done, but things should be better going forward. And to work with that energy and work with that mindset that, you know, when we brace ourselves for for more bad, um, we're not going forward as positively as as we could. So trust mm-hmm. in yourself, trust your instincts that things are lessening up and lightening up and, and bettering. So um, go forward with that attitude. Okay. Right. And card number three, your card is the lovers. Ooh. <laughs> All right. uh, the lovers can mean a romantic relationship, but usually it's it's kind of a goal card. It could mean that uh, there are choices to be made or choices that you're going through and that what's really important in this situation is think of the long term because decisions you make now are going to have an impact long down the road. And mm-hmm. it's long down the road that you should be looking at. It's not the the easy answer right here and now, um, the quick fix. It's not about the quick fix. It's about setting intention and long-term goals. And I think that uh, in life, uh, long-term goals can seem a little discouraging because say something is going to take a year for it to happen. Mm-hmm. What I like to encourage people when I see the lover's card is that that year is going to come no matter what, that time is going to pass. And when that year is up, you want to be where you want to be. Otherwise it's wasted time. So don't be discouraged by the fact that you have time to get there. Just realize that when you do get there, you want to be in the spot. You want to make the right decision that gets you to where you need to go. So I don't know if that resonates with you at the moment, picking card number three, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all about using your time and not being discouraged by that time and, and really commit. It's a commitment card. It's the lovers, you know, uh, commit to uh, those goals and, and make those things happen. Cause you don't want to be disappointed when that time rolls around. You want to, you want to be where you want to be. Right. Right. What's your favorite deck to use? Um, I do like the Rider weight decks. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely have a few of those. I also love, um, and, and a lot of those are based on those decks. This one happens to be medieval themed. I have Mm -hmm. another set that is more nature themed. Let me find some lovely card here. Not that the view, the listener can see, but like, this is their full it's a fox. Oh, I just cool. love it. Love that. Yeah. And I have another another deck called the Enchanted Forest, which is based on the the same traditional tarot cards, but the art is just I I think um the fool starts out with uh the white stag and then you finally, you know, and it takes it invites you to go down this forest path of the major arcana and you meet these characters along the way. And when you get to the world card at the end of the major arcana, uh, the white stag is there and, and it's just it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. It's, I love the imagery of it. And, you know, with my work with the forest parlor and connecting with energy and stuff, um, I love exploring those themes like animal guides and mm-hmm. and just synchronicities with symbols and that sort of thing and just what nature can teach us at at a the quiet pace that it is and you know how things grow and blossom mm-hmm. and you know we harvest and then we rest you know uh, those are cycles in life we always feel like it's go, go, go all the time. And it's not, it's not that way at all in the natural world. Everything needs to rest. Uh, Everything has a a season and a cycle. And I just love incorporating that into uh, my tarot work as well. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you're, how you're, how that fits into the Reiki. Do you do those two together? Yeah, uh, definitely. What is wonderful about Reiki is that it very much explains itself as being non-denominational. Yes, it is a Japanese origin practice, 
but it is not tied to any belief. I encourage anyone who is having a session with me that they can, they can do any ritual they would like. They could do any kind of prayer they would like. They can leave that out entirely. Um, I, you know, I, I encourage people to meditate or read a book or listen to relaxing music, or you can do a headstand, you know, in your cartwheels in your backyard, and it really won't matter. But if you want to f- tune into those subtle energies, do something that uh, provokes that in you that you naturally do anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really loud. I'm going to pause for that. Can you hear that? Yeah. It's like I'm being invaded over here. I'm surprised that hasn't happened already because we really live near an airport. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. So I encourage anyone to incorporate any belief system that they feel uh, the need to. And if you, I I make it very transparent uh, at my website, the theforceparlor.com that I love working with natural energies. And like I said, like with uh, calling the corners uh, and that mm-hmm. sort of thing, I do love to incorporate it's loud again. Luckily I'm used to this. <laughs> And you're used to podcasting where you just... Yeah, just hold for airplane. <laughs> uh, I hope that's not a trend. Okay. <clears throat> I'm very... I do really love to incorporate uh, natural energies, earth, air, fire, water, mm-hmm. or crystal work. And that is something that... I discuss with someone who wants energy work done with me. It's very traditional for me to, to while focusing on the uh, Reiki energy to say my, say the person I'm working with, their name is Beth. You know, I will, I will often um, incorporate the mantra of Beth is earth. Earth is Beth. Beth is earth, Mm. earth is Beth, you know, Beth is air, air is Beth, you know, and Mm. just really fortify that connection of how we, we are a part of this world. We do a really good job of trying to remove ourselves from it, but we are made of it. And if we can call upon uh, those energies, I, I focus on drawing energy up from the earth for this person. I, I draw upon universal energy from everywhere that we are all a part of, channel that into this person. Because Reiki work isn't about channeling your own energy. It's not my energy. I am using uh, the energy that we are made of that is all around us. And that is what uh, the principle of Reiki is, is that you are channeling that energy to give to a certain person at a certain time for the most part. (laughs) Um, And then you even remove your ego from it even further and say, you know, may this energy be used for the greatest good. So it's not my judgment as to where this energy is most needed. I leave that to the universe. So I I laughed a little bit when I mentioned time because um, that's another concept of Reiki is that, Energy can be sent to anyone at any time, past or even future, because when you when you Mm -hmm. examine things on the quantum level of energy and you dive into quantum mechanics and quantum physics, things start to get a little blurry and there's definite scientific, not just evidence, but the mindset and exploration of the idea of everything all the time, all at once. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, funny, haha. It's funny that um, so much of spirituality from texts and things and beliefs from thousands of years ago are already incorporate these ideas, and that science is just kind of catching up with it now. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's exciting to see. And, you know, I mentioned materialism earlier. Materialism is still very big right now. You know, if you can't hold it in your hand, how can you prove it? Uh, well, how do you prove consciousness? You know, and and when we start to dismiss things like consciousness and and uh, things like that, uh, the universe gets cold and lonely really quick. Mm. Um, I find myself exploring just the wondrous avenues of of you know these high concept ideas of like everything all the time all at once because and that's one of the reasons why we started Autonic because when you're dealing with things that you're you don't necessarily encounter in everyday life or concepts that just kind of come at you you know uh and kind of startle you or mm-hmm. you know uh, that can be a scary thing or it can be a wondrous thing and i really find that it makes the world bigger when there's something i can't understand or mm-hmm. quantify and it's wondrous to me and it makes me when I when I don't have those things, that's when I start to get anxious. It's when I when I encounter those things and explore those things, that's when I feel that I am part of something bigger mm-hmm. and uh, something that maybe I won't ever quite understand. But it it makes it makes the world and this life so much more magical and colorful and and wondrous and that's why we started out Aut- tonic to celebrate that stuff it's why i do the work that i do because i love playing in that playground and and being a part of that and encouraging other people to explore that on their own as well i love that it makes life more interesting and and yeah and bigger than ourselves and uh less less um Lonely, small, small, <laughs> yeah. small and boring. I can't. I can't wait for Odd Tonic to return. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so I, I Me hope, too. I hope, I hope that life makes way for that soon. You know the way I feel about things. If it's it's meant to be, life will help me along. Mm-hmm. So, and I I believe it will. It's just a little bit of a hiatus right now, but we'll be back. And in the meantime, um, I'm still doing Tarot Tuesdays in the group and interacting with them every day. And, and I have the forest parlor. I have a Facebook group. We have, um, free online meetups, Mm -hmm. usually around the new moon or the full moon or, uh, one of the, the holidays. Like we just, uh, did, um, Lunasa, which was what August 1st, Mm -hmm first harvest of the year and uh we're going to meet up for the next full moon september 1st we're going to have and uh the the full moon is all about uh charging things psychically so we're gonna mess around with some psychic games and how to boost your psychic abilities and just do fun stuff like that but it's mostly about just having an online uh, community and uh, and having fun with that that's great that's really needed right now yeah, yeah, it's 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 really become this thing where uh we're socializing online and keeping it very casual but still having a bit of a theme and playing around with magical things and stuff that um everyday life just doesn't challenge you to to think about too much. Yeah. So for those uh, um who would like to be a part of your group and would like to find out more, um how can they how can they reach you and where where can they find your group? <laughs> well, I post my events. I have a website. If anyone is interested in divination work or energy healing or anything like that, even a chakra reading evaluation, uh, I have theforestparlor.com. And you, if you do a search for The Forest Parlor on Facebook, you can find me there. Parlor is spelled the old-fashioned way, P-A-R-L-O-U-R for parlor. Uh, you but I have my events listed on my website um, and we have the group online and uh, it's, it's modest. I think we have like 110 people in there, but that's kind of what I love about it is we're still individuals Mm -hmm. and it's not a giant throng of noise. (laughs) (laughs) And um, odd tonic, you can find odd tonic at odd tonic society.com or you can search for odd tonic society. Uh, on Facebook, we have a, a larger group there. And uh, 
they both, Odd Tonic and The Forest Parlor, both have YouTube channels as well. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, Jennifer, this has been lovely. I love talking to you. I love just listening to you because you just... Oh, good, because I talked a lot. (laughs) That's perfect. You have so much to share and so much wisdom and... um, I can tell, you know, your client work is, is, um, is, is valuable and deep and, and, mm. and magical. So I am thankful, so grateful for, that you joined us today on the Women's Sanctuary. Yes. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I can't wait to share this episode with everyone. Yeah. Well, I, I love amplifying the voices of women doing work in the world and, um, you know, just putting their, their gifts out there in the world in beautiful ways. So um, Yay. thank you so much for being here. And um, and we look forward to more Odd Tonic and more from the Forest Parlor. Oh, thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. And that'll do it for us today from the Women's Sanctuary. Uh, for Jennifer Page and I, thank you for joining us. And uh, feel free to like and share and subscribe to the Women's Sanctuary. You can find it wherever you find your podcasts. Apple, Google, Spotify, everywhere else. And so we will see you again next time on the Women's Sanctuary. Mm-hmm.